These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth when they were created, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul. I find it interesting that so many people don't see color, especially the other species of mankind when they don't want to accept the truth, as well as justifying their diabolical behavior towards the indigenous black people. They are colorblind when they can't refute history and wisdom that expose them for who they are. They claim they don't see color when they want to hide their racism and hypocrisy. The other species of mankind proclaim an indigenous black person's skin tone is not the cause for the hatred. To the other species of mankind, if the indigenous black people's appearance is not the reason for your hatred, please share with the indigenous black people the reason for the enmity towards them. If you're truly seeking deliverance, the scripture said the truth will make you free. Since many of you cannot accept truth, I guess you'll never be free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The other species of mankind use racism and discrimination to cover up the real reason for the enmity towards the indigenous black people. Another slogan they like to use to dismiss truth, it doesn't matter. If it doesn't matter, why not give back what you have stolen? Why not reveal everything you are hiding? Why not restore history to its proper context? Why do you fabricate history and alter the scriptures if it doesn't matter? Why did you establish religion to create a false deity with the intention of replacing the Elohim of Israel with an image that is suitable for you? If you don't care if the Most High is green, purple, orange, or yellow, why does it bother you that he looks like an indigenous black person? Why not depict him in his true essence? Why did you insert images of yourself into the scriptures if it doesn't matter? And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen has sought to paint the likeness of their images. Now that the indigenous black people are waking up, their response, it doesn't matter to justify their crimes against the indigenous black people. The serpent seed continue to live a carefree life with the blood money and resources they have stolen from the indigenous black people worldwide. The scripture said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. For many years, the serpent seed benefited from the indigenous black people's legacy. Through their false claims of being the descendants of the original bloodlines the Bible speak of, they've stolen land and resources from the indigenous black people all over the world. They are profiting from the indigenous black people's legacy. In the meantime, the indigenous people continue to live an oppressed life in the beast system. The indigenous people believe everything the serpent seed tell them about their race, heritage, and bloodline. The indigenous people ignore how the most high established bloodlines. There is a growing movement among the other species of mankind claiming the 10% or less indigenous DNA to claim black culture and bloodline. Unfortunately, many indigenous people welcome the serpent seed. By now, you would think the indigenous people would know better and learn from the mistakes of their ancestors. However, Many indigenous people fight their own people to welcome the serpent seed. Despite the serpent seed race classification based solely on skin tone and appearance, many indigenous people prefer to use their methods to identify themselves versus the identity the scripture said that they are. 
The B system referred to the awakening as hate and discrimination, but failed to label their race classification system as racist and hate. Projecting your hatred and trying to use reverse psychology to stop what the Most High is doing in the awakening is not working. I know who you are, and I will make sure the indigenous black people know as well. Ye are of your father, the devil, and the lusts of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. The other species of mankind that bombard Israelite channels with false accusations of spreading hate, racism, and discrimination, they weaponize the fact that they own platforms to mute truth. The serpent seed will insert themselves into the awakening as allies. Once they believe they've been accepted, they begin to spread confusion. They are trying to find ways to distract the indigenous black people within the awakening. They accuse the indigenous black people by saying they are making the most high's words about skin tone and genealogy. The very methods they use to steal the indigenous black people's identity. The awakening is not about skin tone. The awakening is about the people of the Most High, a peculiar bloodline coming to the realization of who they are, letting go of idolatry in religion and returning to serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. If the indigenous people remain in religion, they will never serve the Most High in the spirit and in truth. That is why the awakening is happening to bring the people of the Most High back to him. The kingdom of darkness is the one making the awakening about skin tone, genealogy, hatred, and racism. The sheep followed them when they make their wild accusations. For some, it was not given to know the mysteries. The workers of iniquity are trying to disgrace the awakening. Because the messages do not support their delusions, in addition, the serpent seed dislike truth. The scriptures did say, in the last days, knowledge would increase. I hope the truth of the words of the Most High ignite a fire in the heart of his people. Let the wisdom of the Most High rest upon his people to elevate them from glory to glory. Let their knowledge increase to rise against the spiritual wickedness in high places. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. The prophesied awakening is an ordained season that the synagogue of Satan cannot take over regardless of what they do. They are used to taking over the indigenous people's movements. They are used to assassinating every leader that tried to lead the indigenous black people back to the most high. The synagogue of Satan wants to remove the spotlight on their barbaric ways. It doesn't matter how many movements you successfully taken over and made it about yourself. It does not matter how many prophets or leaders of the Most High you assassinate. The Most High will continue to raise prophets in every generation to help his people. It is the Most High that is waking up his people, as well as the strangers that cleave to his people. The kingdom of darkness cannot stop it. The Most High's sovereignty is unmatched. Have you not heard? Greater is he that's in the people of the Most High than he that's in this world. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The Most High created everything with melanin. Melanin give the plant kingdom and the animal kingdom distinctive colors and patterns that identify their species. Melanin help the animals with camouflaging. Melanin give plant seeds additional strength. Some animals have unique colors that set them apart from the other animals within their species. For example, the big cat species. The unique colors and patterns on a cheetah separates the cheetah from the lion. Everything the Most High created has melanin. 
Melanin determines how dark or light a color is. A dark-skinned person has a large amount of melanin, while a lighter-skinned person has no to little melanin. Melanin is the most highest gift to the people that are made in his image. Melanin gives the world its color. Melanin protects the most highest creation from the sun's UV. Without melanin, the sun's UV burn the skin. Those who do not belong will find it difficult to see color. The sun, which has a major role in the most highest creation, burn them that don't belong. That is why the serpent seed is always looking for ways to block the sun's UV light. They hide behind climate change to accomplish their goals of blocking the sun's UV. They were created through rebellion and lust. That is why they do not value the Most High's creation and always looking for ways to destroy what the Most High made perfect. Only the people that are not of the Most High have a problem with seeing color. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of the heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. Everything in the Most High's creation has color and all flesh that is a part of the Most High's creation can see color. Indigenous black people, if you take the time to listen with an ear to hear, the seed of the serpent is constantly telling on themselves. With them not seeing color is a major confession. With the serpent seed saying they don't see you helps them better destroy you. To the indigenous black people who struggle to understand race and bloodline, I will continue to speak on this topic until the indigenous black people understand the magnitude of their error when they carelessly destroy their bloodline and give away their heritage. Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. The beast system taught the indigenous black people not to value themselves and their bloodline. They lied to you with the one drop rule. Lately, I have heard indigenous black people give those of the serpent seed a pass simply because these people appear to be indigenous. Beware of the people that look like you with strange features. Just because you believe they will experience the black treatment in the beast system does not make them indigenous or your allies. The same people that look like you with strange features, the biracial, the quadroon, and the octoroon, they are the very people making your oppressors. Stop giving the serpent seed access to your DNA. Many of you are spoiling your bloodline and setting up your children for failure. Many of you are led to believe if your father is black, then you are black. With this mindset, the indigenous black people are marrying the sirens and the heathens, believing they are making indigenous children. You are spoiling your seed. To those of you that believe you cannot spoil your seed because your father is black, the scriptures reveal to us that Esau's seed is spoiled. But I have made Esau bare. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren his neighbors, and he is not. How did Esau's seed become spoiled is a very good question. The Israelites who refuse to let go of you are what your father is doctrine. Esau's seed is so spoiled that many of you in the awakening believe Esau's descendants are the serpent seed. How did his bloodline become toxic? When you have low self-esteem and you hate yourself, you don't find value in anything. The scripture said Esau despised his birthright. Because of this, his descendants inherited his carelessness and did not value their bloodline. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Like most Israelites and indigenous black people of today, they don't value their bloodline. That is why they are giving away their heritage to anyone who make them feel good. In addition, they are trading their glory for the lesser. It is time that you start valuing yourself and what the Most High gave to you. The beast system is against you. The indigenous people need to understand that. 
The language of the serpent seed is lies and deception. The serpent seed take advantage of your low self-esteem to assume your identity and legacy, in addition to increase their population. Indigenous people, it is important that you understand how bloodline work, how a bloodline is started. Also, you need to know how to transfer your bloodline to your children. The scriptures reveal to us that Sham, Ham, and Japheth are the three foundational bloodlines that every indigenous black people come from. The seed of the serpent do not descend from the three foundational bloodlines. The scriptures reveal to us during the time of Jared is when the watchers took the daughters of men for wives and had children. The sons of Noah came after the serpent seed infiltrated the indigenous people. The book of Jubilees reveal how the serpent seed came to torment Sham, Ham, and Japheth's children. Noah had to pray to the Most High to cast out these demons in the flesh. And in the third week of this Jubilee, the unclean demons began to lead astray the children of the sons of Noah and to make to err and destroy them. And the sons of Noah came to Noah their father, and they told him concerning the demons which were leading astray and blinding and slaying his sons' sons. The serpent seed's beginning is the watchers and the daughters of men. The abominable union between the watchers and the daughters of men gave birth to what I refer to as the serpent seed or the other species of mankind. Everything has a beginning. It's only in the beast system they refuse to disclose the origin of the other species of mankind. They rather conceal their origin and take on the identity of the indigenous people to hide themselves. Within the three bloodlines, there are countless other bloodlines. How did those bloodlines come to existence? When a person do not marry within their bloodline, that is how another bloodline is formed. Also, the Most High will create a new bloodline to serve his purpose. The Israelite bloodline is a prime example. Jacob married within his bloodline. His wives were Hebrew and his father and mother were Hebrews as well. The Most High decided that he would create the Israelite bloodline, making Jacob the progenitor. Leah, Rachel, and their maiden are the matriarch of the Israelite bloodline. And behold... The Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south. And in thee, and in thy seed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again to this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. The Israelite heritage is a bloodline within the Hebrew bloodline, and the Hebrew bloodline is within Shem's bloodline. That is how a person's bloodline is transferred from one generation to the next. Abraham's Hebrew bloodline will continue if Jacob, Esau, and Abraham's six other sons and their children marry within the Hebrew bloodline. Abraham had other children outside of Isaac and Ishmael. Then again Abraham took a wife, and her name was Ketra, and she bare him Zimran and Jokshan and Medan, and Midian, and Ishbak, and Shur. Esau had one wife from the Hebrew bloodline, and Jacob's wives were Hebrew. That is how you transfer your bloodline by marrying within. That is how the Israelites also had the Hebrew heritage. Do not believe the workers of iniquity, spewing you are what your father is, and thinking you are preserving your bloodline, and transferring your bloodline to your children. If you follow this doctrine, you are spoiling your bloodline and whiting yourself out in the process. In addition, increasing the sins of the Israelites. And Esau, seeing that the daughters of Canaan pleased not Isaac his father, then went Esau unto Ishmael, and took unto the wives which he had, Mahalath, the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son, the sister of Nebajath, 
to be his wife. Isaac married within his father's Abraham bloodline, the Hebrew bloodline. That is why the scriptures do not mention Isaac as a progenitor of a bloodline. Both of his sons are progenitors of a bloodline. Esau is the progenitor of the Edomite bloodline, and Jacob is the progenitor of the chosen people's bloodline, the Israelites. Many sons of Israel today believe they are the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. You are not the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. If you were the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline, the Israelite bloodline would be called after your name. Jacob is the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. That is why the Israelite bloodline is called after his name. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called any more Jacob, but Israel shall be thy name. And he called his name Israel. And God said unto him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. And the land which I gave Abraham and Isaac, to thee I will give it, and to thy seed after thee, Will I give the land? Just like Shem, Ham, and Japheth are the progenitor of their bloodline, and their bloodline is called after their name, Jacob's sons are not the progenitor of the Israelite bloodline. Their father Jacob is the progenitor. That is why the Israelite bloodline is not called after Jacob's sons. Jacob's sons are the progenitor of the tribes within the Israelite bloodline. For example, Judah is the progenitor of the tribe of Judah. Those of us who are from Judah's lineage are called by his name. This is how there are numerous different bloodlines within the three foundational bloodlines. The Israelites are a bloodline within the Hebrew bloodline, and the Hebrew bloodline is within the Shemitic bloodline. Whoever is the progenitor, the bloodline is called after him. The children of Judah would have to marry within Judah's tribe to pass on Judah's inheritance to their children. However, Please listen carefully to what I am saying. To pass on the Israelite heritage to your children, the sons of Israel must marry a daughter of Zion, preferably a daughter of Zion within your tribe. Keep in mind the Most High do not want his people to marry outside of their tribe. The Most High want the chosen bloodline to be as pure as possible. So shall not the inheritance of the children of Israel remove from tribe to tribe. For every one of the children of Israel shall keep himself to the inheritance of the tribe of his fathers. To transfer the Israelite bloodline to your children, the sons of Israel must marry a daughter of Zion. Only the daughters of Zion can produce Israelite children. The sirens and the other strange women and men cannot produce Israelite children. Just as how the strange women cannot give birth to indigenous children. What you create with the other species of mankind is not indigenous. Remember the watchers and the daughters of men? Their offspring are not human. They are a new species of mankind. The Bible called them unclean spirits or demons in the flesh. And now the giants who are produced from the spirits and flesh shall be called evil spirits upon the earth and on the earth shall be their dwelling. The moment you step outside of your bloodline, you cut off your father's bloodline. If you marry and procreate with a person in the other species of mankind, you spoiled your seed. What the sons of Israel are not aware of is when you procreate with an indigenous heathen or a woman from the other species of mankind, you are creating your own bloodline. That is why your children are called by your name. If you want to pass on your Israelite bloodline to your children, then the sons of Israel and the daughters of Zion must marry within. Do not let the kingdom of darkness deceive you. The indigenous black people must make better decisions with who you choose to marry and procreate with. Do not set up your children for failure. You don't want your lineage to be whited out three generations from now by following the beast culture. The serpent seed cannot give birth to indigenous black children. Recessive genes can only produce recessive genes. The synagogue of Satan is aware of the awakening happening among all people. Just as we are waking up to who we are, the people from the other species of mankind, some of them do not know who they are. Many of them are led to believe they are Israelites and Egyptians when they are not, while some of them know exactly who they are. 
Now that many from the serpent seed know their fate, they are trying to infiltrate your bloodline by claiming their blackness to make you comfortable in procreating with them. There are many indigenous black people volunteering themselves. Indigenous black people do not poison your bloodline. Do not identify with the identity the workers of iniquity in the beast system gave to you. Who did the most high say you are? Do not let the confusion surrounding race, bloodline, DNA, and all the other categories the synagogue of Satan created mislead you. It takes an indigenous black woman and men to create indigenous black children. Indigenous black people, take control over your bloodline. The all-inclusive invitation into the indigenous black culture to the other species of mankind has been cut off. You need to close the door and let these people know who they are. They are not indigenous and they never been your allies. That is why they don't see color. It is time the indigenous black people comprehend bloodlines and make the necessary changes. The worst thing that can happen to an indigenous black person is to leave behind whited out descendants. Your purpose and legacy in this world would be fertile if you allow the kingdom of darkness to destroy your bloodline. Indigenous black people, learn from the mistakes of our ancestors and shut down the kingdom of darkness. The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, unto whom the former prophets have cried, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, and from your evil doings. But they did not hear, nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. Your fathers, where are they? And the prophets, do they live forever? But my words and my statutes, which I commanded my servants the prophets, did they not take hold of your fathers? And they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us, according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us.